So, from a practical, I mean, um, oh. when you have IETF meetings and and you only have people that have been to many IETF meetings, do everybody still run through the note well and so on? I don't really know the. I, I, I'm sure that there's some lawyer could explain to us whether this is necessary. I suspect that we're cargo culting. I think uh, we should uh, make driver license, driver's licenses. So if you have a driver's license, you don't need to sit through a novel. Yeah, there you go. I think everybody in this room has a driver's license. <laughs> so there's the moat. So is the recording going? Because we just need we just need the recording to say that we did the note well. Here's the note well. Okay. If you don't yeah. understand any of this, go learn about it. Great. Yeah. Nick. Mm. <laughs> And be nice to each other and remember that you were recorded and everything. Oh, yes. yes. Be nice to each other. We forgot to say that. <laughs> uh, Francesca, right. who is OCF staff? Michael Coster or me, Michael Coster. Yes. <laughs> hey, That's what WebEx calls me now. Yeah, it's a uh, lot of here as a thing thing, Archie. Rather have something clever like ASDF working group or something like that, but OCF staff is apparently what I'm stuck with. But but the problem is that these names they show up in all meetings. It's really strange. <laughs> so I, I am all ASDF working group in all Webex meetings I attend. I don't know how to change. Well, lucky stop, you! Stop I have logging in staff and all. <laughs> stop logging into Webex. That's all. Or stop using the native app. Well, you know, I I tried even cr creating my own account on this computer on WebEx because I didn't have one, and I logged into it, and they still show up as OCF staff. So I think it. I don't know. I might have to. Are you using the native me. app? Yes. Oh, well, the native app. That's why, because it's sticky. So oh. if you just use if you just use the WebRTC, then your oh, life would oh. be better, and you'd have lot more RAM and all sorts of stuff. Me, so don't I get one, two, that. three, four, five, six, seven. It was seven people and seven names. Great. Yes. <clears throat> okay, let's get going for real then. Um, uh, hello, everyone, and thank uh, thank you for joining. Welcome uh, to our uh, the this is fifth uh, interim meeting of the uh, ASPF group. Uh, we have already uh, shown the note well, and I hope you've seen that already. Um, and this is the agenda for today. Uh, uh, we will, um, yes, uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the key idea here is to, um, uh, I mean, this is, but, well, this is the agenda, sorry. Logistics, nothing in particular. This is the fifth meeting. Status update, very brief. And then getting the main part of this is trying to to uh, really getting the SDF ready for working group boss call, the SDF draft. And uh, if we have any time left for anything else after that, then let's take that then. And I saw that Kirsten just pushed a new version, so that's really good. But Let's go through and the intent there is to look at the issues and, and the open PRs. Uh, and then also cover. Other things that we that are blocking us from moving on basically. Uh, and I think anything that sort of relates to later work, uh, let's just put it on a later work list. And get to that later. Okay, any, um, uh, so for some agenda, quick agenda, best, anything else to add here or change or, or so? No, great. Um, yeah, sorry, I hope there was not too much inconvenience about this meet echo versus um, WebEx. Um, I was hopeful and, and tried using, the, they introduced a new, Mechanism where meet, a meet echo link would be generated whenever you request a new meeting if you wanted it to. And uh, so that, that's why there was a meet echo. And unfortunately, that link was then wrong. We find out today. 
and uh, we've mailed the, the folks uh, who are, are can fix that, but uh, we set up a WebEx just to get going. I don't know if anybody else has seen that problem or if it was some local configuration problem, I don't know. Anyway. Um, um, moving on then from logistics to working group uh, status update. Um, and obviously the, uh, we are continuing with our the work to finish this draft. The first draft SDF uh, specification or the RFC and or get that to RFC status. Uh, the first step is of course to do it getting to working group working group last call. Um, and uh, we have been sort of close to that for quite some time. So hopefully we can really close that down now as soon as possible. Um, we will not be meeting in um, Vienna. Um, because many of us still have travel restrictions uh, or travel complications. And now, of course, there's other excitement in the world as well that making sort of travel exciting potentially. Um, so we're not waiting in Vienna. Instead, we have another interim planned on April 11th. Uh, so uh, that is our next meeting. Which is a long time ahead. Yeah. Uh, do you want one earlier than that or? Six weeks away. Something yeah, like I that. think uh, it would make sense to to have another synchronization point. Mm. Well, we can move that one up a week. That's probably about it. Mm. Yeah, I, I think the idea was not to make it too close to Vienna. I mean, on, on both sides of the meeting. Uh, but I mean, Karsten, obviously, you, since you are main pen holder for the, for the draft, I mean, if you feel we can, it, it's valuable. I mean, we can, of course, take another day. That, that's no problem. Yeah, I'm just wondering how much the, the meeting is actually going to influence progress on this document. But uh, yeah, maybe we need to have another form of synchronization point than, than an actual meeting. So we all yeah. agree that, that by March something, we, we have uh, a particular set of pull requests done and people actually review it and, and so on. Um, so that's maybe yeah. better than, than adding another meeting. I, I think so as well. And, and I would, I, 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 I think so. Um... So, so it sounds like what you're really saying is that you, we should start a, a working group call in like working group last call or something like that in two weeks with a two week deadline or something. No, you're yeah, muted, I'm... muted person. If you're trying to talk, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not muted or I'm, I'm talking, right? You're, you're talking about Michael is talking. Okay. Okay. I'm just looking at like what's Michael going on in the chat. Yeah. Uh, there's stuff going on in the chat. Okay. Not really. Um, uh, yeah. Well, I, mean, want... I mean, I mean, we can of course do the sign team meetings as well, but I mean, I, I don't think the, um, I mean, whatever, whatever gets us done <laughs> quickest. Uh... Yeah, so basically the question is whether we will have a working class call capable version uh, by next Monday. Um, if yes, uh, we should working class call that indeed. And uh, that means we will have some, some feedback two weeks from that. And then of course the, the uh, editors will incorporate feedback that, that has a clear direction and will try to get uh, feedback from the working group on things that don't have a clear direction. Mm -hmm. But 
I mean, I, 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 um, I, I don't know if that's, if it's, <laughs> again, unfortunately, since you were the, <laughs> the pen holder, how, how do you, or, or the editor, how, how do you see this? Does that, that would that, would that time plan fly or, or is it, uh, or should we maybe wait until the end of this meeting to decide on, on. Yeah, let's do that. Much, yeah. Let, let, let's, let's talk, let's, let's get, so let's say the last at least 10 minutes uh, to to really try to nail down yep. exactly what are the next steps and, and uh, the kind of deadlines for next steps. Good. Great. Uh, yes. Uh, I just wanted to have one note on the working group state, uh, status update. Uh, and that is that is sort of if um uh, the one data model i don't know if you michael if you were signed up to that mailing list but the one data model has changed uh, mail uh, let's say mailing list uh, provider uh, so you have to re-register uh, to a groups.io uh, thing uh, we, we will paste that link into uh, uh, the notes so if people want to read your register. Uh, okay. Now there is something called WebEx Assistant trying to help me. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, so please, please sign up to that list because that's obviously like the user group for SDF. Good. Uh, to uh, the main meet of this meeting. Um, getting SDF ready for working group last call. Um, I mean, obviously, as I said, we have issues. We have a couple of PRs. Karsten, you just released an updated uh, draft. I haven't had the chance to look at it. Can you please sort of bring us up to date you know, where we are? <laughs> uh, yeah. The, the... Dash 11 essentially integrates the, the various uh, uh, pull requests uh, that uh, we had been discussing or had been asking for um, at the last meeting. So mm -hmm. it's just too bad that this took five weeks to actually uh, get done. We need to get better than that. And mm -hmm. um, so um, I think the the please all read that but uh, let's focus on actually looking at the issues that are still open in, in github mm, okay so um but uh, because last time i checked you haven't closed the prs right about uh, i have closed all of the prs there, there are two new ones um okay, okay. and there there are a few prs that evacuated into issues <laughs> into new issues oh, okay. Okay. So, so we will see them again but but as as a new new issue instead of existing PR. yeah okay good but then okay but th this is good because then uh you have to do it today great um perfect oh. yeah Good. So, uh, should we just take a look at those PRs then, or do you want to? Uh, should we take the issues first? Uh, well, let's. I haven't actually seen the PRs yet because they really landed in the last five minutes or so. Um, but uh, uh, I think we can start with uh, uh, the issues. I think the PRs are actually relatively easy because uh, th they are again things that we have discussed but nobody has written up uh, yet. So maybe we can uh, start oldest first. There are several that are marked task. We don't really need to um, discuss. Um, and I also think uh, we, we, we can um, bring up the, the one next issues, but I think that's not so uh, interesting at the moment. So uh, I would focus on um, 
the ones that we actually can act on and, and waiting for tool update is unfortunately still waiting for tool update. Um, so the, the most top level one, that's a, yeah, the, the inverse one. <laughs> so let's just go to 56. Uh, You're going to go to 56. There we go. Yeah, I'm... Mm -hmm. So um, that was the discussion about uh, the, the structure above the affordance level. So we have the affordances <clears throat> like property action event. We usually bundle them in an SDF object. And then we have structure above that, which is the SDF thing. And uh, right now we are requiring uh, all the the affordances to be bundled into SDF object uh, before we can put them into an SDF uh, thing. So we have a rather constrained regular structure. And the question here was whether we want to uh, open this up a little bit and essentially lose the difference between SDF object and SDF thing. Um, so we, we can put uh, affordances everywhere. Uh, we, we might still have an, a difference between SDF thing and SDF object because uh, SDF objects don't nest and SDF things do. But apart from them, they're, they're, that they are then the same. So it's, it's not really that uh, much of, of a difference uh, that it's actually worth uh, separating the two concepts. And there were some recent discussion uh, contributions at the end. So if you can scroll down. So what, one question that comes up if we, we don't uh, do that, if we re require all properties, um, actions and events going through an SDF object, we might want to give SDF objects that essentially are control panels being used for bringing other things together. We might want to give these things a name. Um, but um, yeah, the, again, the, the other alternative is just to say uh, there, there isn't really a difference between SDF thing and SDF object and, and we can simplify things further now that we have lost SDF uh, uh, product um, as another distinction that we weren't quite sure we, we were actually making. Uh, that would certainly simplify things. Um, can we do, because one, one thing here is that thing is basically the only way to do composition that we have. Can, I mean, above, on the kind of object, yeah. above the the affordance and level, yes, you can above, compose exactly, affordances, above. but uh, you cannot uh, uh, compose uh, objects without going through things. And of no. course, one one way would be to say everything is an object, or maybe we get rid of the term SDF object because that's really very confusing, and we call them all SDF things, and SDF things just nest. So what I, what I'm thinking is if um, it, it's, it's likely that the, the distinction between object and thing is is a bit you know uh, complicated anyway. But I only wonder if if we remove this if um, because when we look at the composition thing of of things above objects currently, I mean we are we have talked about these relationships of connecting objects and other things together uh, in other ways that more strictly hierarchical, and uh, so I wonder if we it, it would actually be maybe convenient as you say to to um, to take away things <laughs> as they are today. And then just have objects, and then we have only have one kind of building block when we start putting together the relationships. 
I, I would say that object and thing don't have any important distinction between each other in terms of, um, you know, what, what they really allow, except for thing doesn't allow affordances. I, I, I may be wrong about that. I mean, some subtlety or whatever, but to me, another, a different class isn't really required to do the composition that we need to do. So I'm kind of playing and on saying, yeah, we could probably just have a SPF thing and have things be composed of other things and use some kind of, if, if we, you know, especially if we develop the, the linking. So in, in a sense, we're, we're, you know, Jan is asking that we compensate for, you know, what, what I've always seen as a deficiency and thing description, but they're really what this does is going forward, this would align us with what the way they're doing it in thing description a little better as well. Although I think either way could have been translated. We have a hierarchy or a thing that's just links. Those, those can both sort of compose the same way. So I don't see any big drawback to having just one class name there instead of two. So pick, pick an object or thing. I guess thing, I, I'm kind of agreeing with Karsten also that thing is a little more, oh, sorry, that object is kind of problematic and that if we could somehow settle on thing, um, but that feels like a bigger change somehow. I don't know. But, but presumably, I mean, if we get rid of now, let, let, let's for the for the purposes of the discussion now use the kind of the old terminology of objects and things. So we, we say that objects contain affordances or uh, and and, uh, and so on, uh, and, and things are kind of contains objects and other things. Uh, I guess that if we If we do that, it's it's maybe it's maybe easier to take away SDF thing. Yes, if, if we take away SDF thing now, and then in you know follow up specification, want to do this relationships and how other things can can how you kind of you connect objects together. Uh, then we don't have to so much perhaps uh, you know make. I guess integrating in a more in a more sophisticated relationship model, if you have something like thing that's already defined, that might make might make that work more complicated than necessary. Um, so yeah, but, but and I guess from the one DM perspective, there is no problem of actually removing SDF thing. Uh, yeah, I, I, the, earlier there was a design even that. There were there were some earlier in the in the design there were some people who were strongly of the opinion that there shouldn't be any recursion, but at this point after having been through a number of examples and use cases and all of that it seems like it it's a simplification to allow objects to have um, events actions properties and other objects because mm -hmm. really it's no different in fact I, I would even say that we could. We could have a period where we we allow object and thing, and then we deprecate, you know, the one we're not going to use. Maybe we can allow them to be interchangeable now as a convenience, or maybe we want to make the change. Actually, I guess if we're going to for for, for you know uh, RFC, then we need to um, probably settle on one or the other. But um, I don't. Yeah, I don't see any real need to have. Two different, two different behaviors. Uh, like we already really have one behavior. We don't. We just have two names. So um, yeah. Yeah, I, I I have myself. I mean, arguments be both ways. I mean, I I think there's the arguments for, I mean, allowing on the thing level, as I mentioned in my you know comment that like same question has come up a few times. Like when people started using SDF to model things, they were like, why cannot I put things here? Because it really applies to everything underneath. Um, 
but then of course it was always like well you do a specific object that contains that um but then either it's a naming convention what is that object so it was a bit awkward um for doing affordances or other well basically affordances that apply for all the nested objects um but then again for the flip side and I know well okay for, for the pro side I, I think like it makes sense to keep it expressive um because maybe there are some ecosystems like like web of things that seem seems to do it like that way and one key quality of SDF is to be able to represent you know different ecosystem ways of modeling things then in one dm side we can of course restrict it okay like here we said we have a guideline that we do it only one way or the other um but then on the flip side i'm wondering what are the ecosystems that have a property like a leaf node that you cannot extend i guess yang has something like that um do we need something to cover for those so would we still need two different um qualities Well, in, in Yang's, there is a difference between lists and leaf lists, but that, that's mainly uh, because of the way they are mapping things to XML. And they wanted to have a simple mapping for the leaf lists and a more complicated uh, one for the lists, where they actually can distinguish between uh, key elements and non key elements, and uh, which you don't do in, in a leaf list. Mm -hmm. So that that's. Um, don't think that that applies a lot on on the SCF side. Okay, thanks. I think the only new pattern that we could end up seeing is where there's an object that has some properties and other objects. And I think today we would be a, a another level of nesting for those properties that were that you wanted. So in that sense, it sort of feels like it's sort of a um, you know, adding a, 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 a uh, it isn't really like a class variable, is it? It's really different from that. But it, it's sort of like at that level of composition, it feels like a class variable where you want this this thing to be these these properties or events and actions really to be part of to be part of everyone, but you don't want to encapsulate it one layer deeper. So we could be seeing a new pattern like that, and we'd have to decide whether whether that's a pattern. Um, you know, that would that would break translations to some ecosystems or have some other undesirable effect. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. But we, you know, that would be, I think, the only thing new I think we could see. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm also thinking about <clears throat> the ecosystems that don't have nesting at all, like the Ipsos Live with M2M, whether that bring some complications that would have to check there isn't, isn't anything nested. Now, if it's an object, I know there's nothing nested. Um, Wouldn't that be like in lightweight MPM, like an object with object links and then also with resources? Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's how I was planning to do the composition with the object links, but now I'm, I'm talking about without any composition that um, if, if my code sees a SDF object, I know I can translate it. Uh, but now I would have to check that, hey, it doesn't have anything nested before I know that I can translate it. Well, you could still and translate it. You'd have to construct another object and make a link to it in your translation. Yeah, yeah well, let's say with the, with the <clears throat> current basic functionality, it gets tricky, but... I see your translator yeah. wouldn't, would need to be extended to, to be able to do that, but it might actually be the right pattern. It would It would be... Sort of round trippable, right? It would be converted back in the same way. I think the reason mm. I ask is I'm working on a on a thing that kind of would do that also. <laughs> mm. Yeah, maybe I need to write the implementation, and then it's maybe no concern anymore. But okay, but it feels a bit like we could actually. <clears throat> what should I say? Take take away things and keep the objects and then make the objects nestable and 
uh, if that doesn't work, then we will find out. But maybe we can sort that out later then in some kind mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, non. Uh, uh... So we, we, we do have nesting today. Um, the, the only question we were discussing is whether this, this nesting needs to be in, in a somewhat uh, ceremonized way where you actually bundle your affordances into an object before you can put them into a thing. And um, so the, the idea to say we, we are loosening up these structural constraints and just uh, call all of the, the um, thing-like um, objects uh, the same, um, th that would uh, uh, simplify constructing the things. Um, of course, it would uh, uh, make it uh, more interesting to actually consume them uh, because now uh, you would uh, actually need to find out what's in there before you know how, how you can uh, process it and, and relate it um, to your uh, ecosystem. But on the other hand, th th this is a one-liner JSON path, so it, it's not like it's really hard to find out whether an, a, a thing contains another thing. And um, yeah, so my argument uh, here would be to, to uh, completely lose the SDF object because that's a term that it has always confu confused people. Uh, only keep the thing, allow affordances in, in things so they become a replacement for SDF objects and allow SDF object as an alternate name as, as a one dot one feature that eventually will, will go away. Exactly what um, what I would think would be the best path also. So maybe you should attach a thumbs up to my comment here. So this is your comment up here. Yeah. Plus one, yeah, right. <laughs> But Jan says plus one too. Yeah, I'm wondering uh, downsides of keeping the two as as with a feature, uh, or if we can get rid of. But then again, I'm kind of pro of keeping the object because I know that's used quite widely already. <laughs> so it shifts the burden to the user, I guess. And so to one DM, we have to, it makes us have to make a decision about when we shift our validators and all of that, right? Yeah, because I think in, in one DM, we sh should be future proof and then go with all our models with the ones that we'll keep long term. Yes. But on the other hand, everything that's in the playground, what what's the work? Yeah. Well, maybe maybe one downside is like if if we want to re eventually use the SDF object with something else, um. Well, maybe it's any anyway a bad idea because we have old specs using that name, but yeah, I think that, that, that name is burned. Yeah, it's a good point. So I don't think I have anything well, better than your thing. Sorry, do you have a proposal for a new name of the thing of the of the entity? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say if we can't think of anything better than thing, then it seems like since since the thing description also uses thing already and and there's sort of some some sort of testing of that already that that's something we could go with. Well, we already have things, but it's not introducing something new. It's just uh, uh, reducing the number of terms that we actually use for describing things. And and opening the constraint on things to enable the affordances to be composed at that. And really, it's really saying where, where you have an object now, you can just make that a thing and it will all work the same way.
Yeah, maybe it would be great if we document somewhere also the downsides. I, I remember there were some early discussions, like must have been way more than a year ago, when this was first brought up, and there were some strong statements why it was a bad idea, but I don't remember those. Mostly, I, as I recall, the 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 thing that was um, was thought to be a bad idea was the idea of nesting objects in objects, which is really what we're proposing to do. Now, I, I'm not sure <laughs> how widespread those concerns were. I do know that one person who was quite vocal about that is has just let us know that they won't be participating anymore. So we don't have to worry about them if, if that's what we're worried about. But um, I don't really think that there was a general well-formed, uh, what, what, you know, well-formed in terms of logical, other than sort of a desire to keep things simple. I think that was the main argument. And things okay. aren't simple because we have to compose them. And this seems to be the simplest way of opening up composition. So I see it's a trade off where, you know, we, we can't really have that as a hard and fast rule. We don't need to have that. We don't need to have that as a hard and fast rule. I, I don't believe that you can't nest, nest things. I think it was just sort of like, yeah, it's too much complexity. And, but I, I don't think we really had any, any sort of formal logic that said it was a bad idea. Yeah, I think this is also another instance of uh, baking policy into mechanism, which is one of the big mistakes you can make when designing a protocol. So if you want to have a policy, write it up separately, but don't bake it into the mechanism. That, that's, that's a good, that's a good lesson. In, indeed, indeed. And then maybe it's kind of if, if on let's say one DM, some model side we have this kind of a policy. Let's make it explicit there, but not have a restricting SDF. Yeah, that's what I was getting at earlier. Is that it moves the decision down to the the implementer to the user of SDF, which in this case in one DM we would have to make that that choice. When we, we would that would be on us to do that. Okay, so um, I think uh, Jan and I can go ahead and, and do another pull request based on what we just have discussed. And we probably should try to get one more thing looked at because before it's 10 to the hour. Okay, what's next? Yeah, so I would ask people to maybe look at number 27, which has been around for a year. Uh, now we, we didn't really get to that, but uh, um, at some point we have to make sure that our example actually uh, complies. <laughs> um, and uh, so the, 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 the example actually is factoring data qualities in, in an STF choice. So you have a uh, choice between different things. I forget what it was. And um, th these have common data qualities. And so you put the the data qualities at the same level at, as the SDF choice is, which is uh, certainly uh, a nice thing to, to reduce the amount of noise, but it also makes the, the grammar uh, more complicated. So if more people could simply look at the example and think whether they are comfortable with that, um, we probably have to open up the grammar a, a lot uh, to enable that, but that, that may not be a big problem in the end.
I mean, I would definitely say that that is a, a feature that will result in better models, less noise, less um, error prone when you when you just made a mistake in cutting it, copying and pasting, which you have to do a lot of with the current, you know, if you, if you don't have this. So, um, I would, I would say the extra processing, the extra grammar is worth worthwhile and I'll, oh, I didn't realize we had a proposal. So I'll go, I'll go look at it. Oh, it's been, been a while. <laughs> Almost a year. I'll go look at it. Oh, there you go. Okay. And what are we going to do with this item? Well, somebody has to write a pull request for this. Okay. And... I'm hoping someone is going to be assigned. Yeah, let's do that. That was easy. Okay. I wasn't thinking of you assigning you. <laughs> uh, because it's 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 really about fiddling with the CDDL grammar. I'm not sure that anybody yeah. else here wants to do that. So that's right. right. That's right. Unfortunately, Carson is the our, our expert there. All right. So maybe we should do the twenty. What is it? Eight then. So can can you open that? Twenty eight, you said. Twenty eight, yes. Yeah, there we go. So basically, we have a way to refer to JSON pointers on the right hand side, so we can do things like SDF refs and SDF required and so on uh, using JSON pointers. So we can pull from JSON pointers. But we cannot push to JSON pointers uh, because we we um, essentially uh, fill that space by the structure of our JSON files. So whatever is in a specific position, JSON-wise, also gets that JSON pointer. And uh, the result of that is that it uh, it's not easy to actually contribute to more than the default namespace. Uh, because uh, the, the structure of the JSON file is located in the default namespace, um, and th there is uh, no no easy way to put things elsewhere. Now, of course, we could come up with a convention like like uh, Ari's example um, at, at the uh, down at the page we are looking at uh, does. So we we might want to put a curry in the um, map key like foo dot uh, uh, foo colon stf thing um but the problem is that the the json pointer that results from that of course is suddenly uh linked to the the prefix name that was locally assigned to to this uh, uri in um in the, um this particular model and even if you expand that, then you get uh, full URI paths uh, with, with scheme and authority um, in the position of these map keys. And they are still hard to, to operate on as JSON pointers. So we, we, we have a desire to do something here, but we don't have an easy way to integrate it in the relatively simple model we have been able to maintain so far. And um, so uh, th th there are two possible outcomes. Uh, one is that we actually invent something that, that makes this possible. And the other is that we just uh, have to give up at some, po some point because of lack of imagination and decide that, that this is hard to, too hard to do. And I'm heavily on the lack of imagination side here. <laughs> I really have no idea how to do this. Um, so, um, I think it, it uh, would be useful to have one last look at this 
and uh, decide uh, whether we really have no idea how to do this uh, and then lay it to rest and, and uh, maybe pick it up later in, in an SDF 2.0 when we have more experience with that. It seems like the thing we would be losing would just be the ability to contribute to multiple namespaces in one file. But what we could potentially gain in resolving this and solving this as a better feature would be a more grown up way of handling namespaces, maybe more related to the way programming languages handle imports and things like that. But that's not really needed right now. <laughs> so I guess like, yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, I'm, I guess I'm kind of mostly agreeing and it seems like at this point we could say if we resolve it, we could move it to 2.0 and the only thing we'd be losing in the short term would be this thing that we don't even really use right now, which is contributing to multiple namespaces in a single file. Yeah, at the moment we don't need export statements. We, we have kind of import statements, but we, we don't say what actually is exported uh, from a model. Everything is exported from a model. And uh, adding export statements, of course, would be one way of solving this. But this means you really have to write a lot of noise. Maybe one consideration here. If we eventually want to do something like the export statements, um, is there something we should take into consideration now for the upcoming RFC that we don't paint ourselves in the corner? Well, if we were to add this, this would probably become another top level thing like we already have in the namespace um, section and in the default namespace uh, section. So um, one question is whether we, we uh, maybe should be grouping all these these namespace manipulations at, at one point so they they don't get mixed up with other things so if, if you look at the sdf mapping draft um, there we are essentially using the top level structure of of sdf uh, with an info section and and the namespaces and the default namespace and uh, put something else at the top level uh, there and uh, if we put too many things at the top level, uh, then in the long run, this will just get uh, messy. So th that's one direction we, we might want to prepare for if we want to make more name manipulation part of, of uh, the feature set. So, so maybe these are kind of the extensibility considerations we start writing down uh, in a, I mean, a wiki or somewhere um, to make sure we've got those all covered when we do the final pass for the RFC. I'm thinking the, the other aspect is this, um, um, the query prefixes for different qualities for uh, ecosystem specific extensions. This maybe have some commonalities there. So for those who haven't followed that discussion, for example, if I want to put my IPSO ID in an object definition that would normally be in a, in a mapping file, but I want to provide a single set of definitions to have it, I could, for example, have this something like IPSO colon ID in a, in a property or an object. Um, that's one ex potential extension mechanism. Uh, but this, <clears throat> because with multiple namespaces, mechanism shouldn't then conflict with that one. The, the whole question of how do we name um, qualities, what's the extension point for naming qualities, that, that's a related question because it also would require us to actually touch uh, what we can put into these these uh, JSON pointers or in, into the, the map keys that then constitute the JSON pointers. It's related, but it may not have the same solutions actually i guess it's understood that um at least in my proposed designer strongman design for this um that was based on um some, some other stuff anyway 
I guess it's understood that when you use a query to extend the namespace of qualities in an ecosystem specific way, that that still resolves to a URI that points to a set of definitions that define the names that you're going to use. I, I would I was assuming that, right? So in that sense, the use of the query in the file isn't really any different. It just points to a different set of definitions that you're using in the namespace. So I didn't see any conflict doing that. <clears throat> Michael, if you can scroll down, you can see the, the notes I'm, I've been typing in here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I just don't have. <laughs> I could actually open a window and do that, but I don't. Another Michael. Oh, I think right. he wants me to scroll down, which I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I get for not having a window open. Um, so we actually uh, have less than 10 minutes left. Yes, I was going to say that next. We somehow, it feels a bit like we, we, we shouldn't be closing any doors too much, perhaps. But on the other hand, uh, we somehow need to. I have also been adding some, take some notes in the, um, in the uh, Etherpad. Um, uh, can we park this uh, 28? Somehow. Well, we definitely we... can do nothing. That that, that works. <laughs> the, <laughs> the question is, um, do we have an idea how can to we do, do nothing now? Or do we have an idea how to prepare for doing this later uh, by adding some extension point that we haven't been thinking about so far? Yes, and, and I think that that prepare thing would be, I mean, I, I wouldn't go and add, add it in the upcoming RFC, um, but the prepare thing, that would be very good. Okay. But then we needed a sort of a preparedness design uh, for this. Well, uh, one thing was, would be, does our extension point mechanism enable this? And if, if so, then it sort of becomes the point of, you know, the extension mechanism. Like Carson was saying. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we need to figure out how do we figure that out? Can we, can we I mean, can we base a design on our, our sort of extension point mechanism, whatever that is? And <laughs> uh, right. I mean, I, I don't want to sort of close the discussion too early, but I think it's, 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 uh, it's, would be good to have some kind of uh, yeah yeah m maybe we could have in the RFC a, a section about the extensibility like these are the ways we envision the STF spec to be extended then at least the current implementations can prepare for that and then maybe do a few experiments along those lines to see it doesn't break, and then be happy with it. So, would it be possible to have a design team meeting in week eleven, uh, from the fourth March fourteenth, the week before the ITF? Yep. Yeah, I will. In this time slot or around this? In just the time time slot works for me. Yep, works for me too. Okay, in that case, we we would give up the idea of submitting a draft on the 7th, but would submit the draft uh, at the end of week 11 on the, uh, what is it, on the 20th. Which is still enough time to have a working last call done uh, before April 11. So just a note that interims cannot be scheduled that week, but design team meetings, that's fine. So just don't request an interim right. for, for that one. Yeah. Thank you, Francesca. Yes. Good point. Um,
this. Uh, so it was March 14th, right? Yes. Not 11. Pick 11. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <Not short. laughs> 11th was, the, yeah. This, uh, anyway, um, that said, uh, okay, so we have one design time team meeting coming up for this, uh, I mean, extensibility, and where this is kind of a use case for extensibility. Um, are there others? I mean, um, and we have kind of somewhat ideas about uh, the other things we discussed today. Uh, should we then just move? I mean, uh, next step wise here. Um, I think we were supposed to discuss, I mean, should we take like a two week and maybe that we can use some part of the design team meeting as well then to, to kind of, if there were last minute fixes on the spec that needs to be changed, but should we take like a two week review period now and everybody review the specification and, and make sure that everything looks fine and so on. That, that's certainly a useful thing to have, to have, but we also need to get uh, progress on the last issues. Uh, so yeah, I, I was going to say, do we, we have a clear idea of what the it must solve, uh, you know, must must deal with issues are? Yeah, because I, it feels like we should have been, the, the, the issues open right now. I mean, it would really be like, this one will be handled in. in yep, that's <laughs> our limiting RFC. progress right now. Yeah. So we can yeah. prioritize the remaining issues at, and maybe they all need to be resolved, but that's going to be the, that's also going to be limiting our progress to asking for working group last calls. So there's sort of multiple dependencies that we have to satisfy. And this is probably the long, the longest one. Mm -hmm. Unless we can say some of these issues don't, you know, can be pushed off. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't have a good sense of what the whole set of them are right now. Again, I should have that open, but I don't. No, I don't. Um, uh, right. Um, but that's something we can do with, I think we already have the labels though. I think Karsten's been kind of on top of that. So I just haven't reviewed yeah. it myself. Because that, obviously that should be something we should have done <laughs> right now. Uh, what What is it we should have done? I mean, we should have one thing to do. We should have spent some time on looking at the remaining issues and, and uh, you know, prioritizing them. Oh, or... adding GitHub labels. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, all right, so but I, guess, um, I think we have like one minute left here. So, um, should we? I, I, uh, I want to suggest that, uh, you know, adding the labels is something that people could do and in, in asynchronously and argue about asynchronously on the mailing list. Yeah. I'm have to take the lead though, probably. Yeah. Well, so, it might be that what yeah. we need is a series of design team meetings that, um, you know, push people to read the issues more often. Mm -hmm. So should, could we take a lot just to cover that piece then, uh, design team meeting then, uh, no, we, really we, 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 like... we should take some time out of every design team meeting to do that. Yeah. Right. But I, okay, don't, think so let, take let, a, I don't think we should take a design team meeting just to do that. We should just take some no. time and say, okay. and put a time box on it. And, um, yeah. uh, cause it's really about evaluating the issue and concluding yeah, so, with what you need to do. Yeah. 
So it's a good point, but let's let's then on as more homework for the March 14. Please have a look at the issue list and try. I mean, uh, suggest <laughs> priority or at least know about the priorities, your priorities. We can discuss them then. And it, it should not be the full. I mean, obviously, it should only be a short part of the design meeting. Let's that, spend like 10 minutes at the start there to prioritize. Uh, send out a note to to the mailing list to yeah. remind people. So that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay, I'm gonna drop in the uh, the one DM meeting. But thank yes. you, everybody. Right. Thank, thank you. All. I, I have to to go. I can't stay longer. Yeah, I but... need to drop now. I also need to drop now for next meeting. So thank you all uh, for this. Uh, we'll post the notes. Please and so on. read the pull request as well. Uh, read the PRs you. and read issues and you know do all homework stuff. Thank you guys. Uh, and we had Wouter join. Wouter also joined, yes. Yeah, yeah I joined. Sorry, yeah, there was an overlapping other meeting. Yeah. Of course there is. Thank you. Okay. Thank See you. Bye. Yes. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye.